Hey guys, welcome back to Foreign Reacts. Today, we're gonna be checking out a video titled, Why the Dutch Wait Less at Traffic Lights. I don't even know why that would be possible and why would that be special to the uh, Netherlands, but um, it should be an interesting video. So I'm gonna just get right into that video right now. So if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Leave a like on this video and thank you for watching as usual. And uh, if you have any recommendations, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I'll try, to, I'll try to get back to those as soon as possible. But for now, let's get right into this video, guys. When I'm traveling somewhere, I hate traffic lights and I go out of my way to find routes that avoid them. But for some reason, I still find them. <laughs> I got scared right now. I, I, I thought, I thought, I thought we was going. <sighs> if you guys saw it, you guys saw it. But I got scared. Interesting. I even own a real traffic light at home. When studying engineering in Canada, I had an exam question to design a state machine for a traffic light controller. It had to go green, then yellow, then red and then repeat in the other direction. Easy enough. I would not want to take that exam question in the Netherlands because traffic lights are way more complicated here. There are several times where I've sat around watching traffic lights in the Netherlands with absolute fascination. Does anyone else do that or is it just us engineers? Traffic lights in the Netherlands have so many interesting combinations and they change depending on what traffic is detected and from where. Most cities in the world have detection circuits at low traffic intersections to detect if there's a stopped car at a red light. But traffic dependent detectors, which detect approaching traffic and change the signals based on real time traffic levels, are used at the majority of intersections in Amsterdam. And these kind of signals are much more common in the Netherlands in general than in other countries. The North American traffic engineering profession was created to manage cars, and it shows. The movement of cars is the absolute highest priority over everything else. In the Netherlands, there are two priorities at traffic lights. First is to minimize conflict, to reduce the number of times any road user will cross the path of any other, for safety. The second is to optimize the movement of as many people as possible, not just as many cars as possible. And that makes the road function much more efficiently. Here's an example from a new intersection I cross every day. As you can see, there's a countdown timer for the bicycle light, which is nice. But there are loops in the ground to detect bicycles not just at the light, but also several meters before the light, and the same is done for car traffic. If the controller detects that a cyclist is approaching and the intersection could be clear, then it will make the light red for cars and speed up the countdown timer to let cyclists get through without stopping. It's always so satisfying to watch the timer count down in only a few seconds just because it detected my bike. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, listen, I now live in Finland, okay? And there are two countries that outside of Finland in Europe that I've had my eyes on since I've been doing reaction videos, and that is the Netherlands and uh, Germany, obviously. And I'm telling you, man, like <laughs> that right there was impressive. I have never seen that in my entire life. That literally just started, to, it started to count from like probably like 46 or 43, I don't remember. And then it went faster to around like 36, 37, and it just went green. You can ride that is impressive. In North America, <coughs> when it's green, it's green for everyone in that direction. But in the Netherlands, many signals work independently. So when there's a chance for one direction to go without interfering with another, then they're given that opportunity. In this example, the bicycle light is green in both directions, here and here, because there are no cars detected going straight through, allowing this girl on the bike to turn left without stopping. Yet this time, the far signal is not green. So these cyclists need to stop, to stop to allow these cars to go through. On larger intersections, pedestrians may be given a green light to cross partway instead of having to wait until the whole intersection is clear to start walking. If a tram arrives, it will be given priority, and that section of the pedestrian crossing will be red. In North America, almost all crossings are single phase, which prevents the intersection from responding to real-time traffic levels. That simplicity is not only inefficient, but if you're walking or cycling, it can also be really scary because you have a long distance to travel and cars can cross your path in multiple places. 
It's for this reason that Dutch traffic signals can let pedestrians and cyclists have their own signal while cars are given a red light. Notice here that cyclists are given a green light to make a left turn while right. all car traffic is stopped, making this an extremely safe crossing. Pedestrians are also allowed to cross here, in the bottom left, because they do not cross paths with those left turning cyclists. This is an interesting circumstance where cyclists are given a green in two directions at once. This results in the cyclists on the left needing to wait briefly here, but it allows the cyclists to get through in one light cycle. I didn't see this happen in any other light cycle, so the system must have detected a buildup of cyclists and optimized for it. I also really appreciate that there are no right turns on a red light for cars here, which is good because this is a ridiculously pedestrian unfriendly rule. A US study found that allowing cars to turn right on red resulted in a 69% increase in crashes with pedestrians and cyclists. The Netherlands tightly controls when right turns can be made, which not only significantly increases the safety of people outside of cars, but also ensures that the path is clear for right turning cars. It allows more advanced light combinations as well. Watch how this tram turns left while these cars in the foreground can turn right, while no pedestrians or cyclists are allowed to cross in their way. Right. With no right turn on red, pedestrians can be given a head start. Notice how these people are halfway through the intersection before the bicycles and cars are allowed to go. These leading pedestrian signals are still quite rare in North America, but they significantly increase pedestrian safety from right turning cars. One Chicago study found a 13% decrease in collisions with people walking when leading pedestrian signals were used. I find I like the f the fact that this video is flooded with facts. I can't lie to you. Like I love to do reactions and it's just flooded with facts and this video is factual. Like good gosh. The intersections here are very pedestrian friendly in general. Watch these people cross. They come up to the crossing, press the beg button, and the light changes immediately for them. The way most traffic lights are programmed in North America, that will almost never yeah, happen. Yeah, you got to wait. In car-centric cities, you have a very narrow window of time to push that button, or you'll be waiting a whole light cycle to try again. Watch what happens when this man presses the beg button. The light was red, but the pedestrian signal doesn't come on, because it was pressed too late. The light turns green for cars, of course, but there's no walk signal, so these... And that, that lady could have gotten smacked. She, she, she not even realized that that RAV, RAV4, it's a type Toyota RAV4, was going by, like... It's crazy like that, bro. It, 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 I'm sorry, but when it comes to America and pedestrian, it, look how skinny that sidewalk is. Like, I don't know if it's the entire Euro, but in Finland, the sidewalk is so wide. Like, you can drive a car on that thing, bro. Like, for real, comfortably. People are technically crossing illegally. It's completely ridiculous, but North American traffic engineers go out of their way to avoid slowing down drivers by having those pesky pedestrians in the way. <laughs> Pedestrians and cyclists are seen as a nuisance that get in the way of drivers, rather than people who are also trying to get somewhere. What's worse is that buses and streetcars are almost always stuck in traffic, because traffic engineers and politicians don't want to take away any space from cars to make a dedicated transit lane, even though it would ultimately speed up car traffic. Thankfully, in the Netherlands, public transportation has the highest priority and almost always gets a green light. It doesn't matter what else is happening at this intersection, this tram is going through right now. Often, the only time a tram will be at a red light is when it's ahead of schedule, or when another transit vehicle is crossing first. This is the obvious and sane thing to do, because a bus or tram will usually have dozens of people on it who should clearly have priority. Right. It's not that cities in the US and Canada don't have sophisticated traffic light control systems, they do. This document describes a system used I've in never seen it. They even have the capability for transit signal priority. It's just that these systems are almost exclusively used to keep car traffic flowing and are rarely used to prioritize any other modes of travel or to ensure the safety of other road users. For example, even in this fully separated and dedicated streetcar lane in Toronto, the streetcar gets stuck at this red light. But they won't install transit signal priority here because it would, and I quote, fatally disrupt operations on intersecting streets. That's engineer speak for Screw the people on that streetcar, there are drivers who have important places to go. Here's another example from Toronto that used to drive me crazy. At this light, some streetcars turn left and have their own signal. Of course, being Canada, it's not a priority signal, but that's not the most infuriating part. 
When turning left, they don't want pedestrians to cross the street in front of the streetcar, so they block the walk signal here. But because these traffic lights are stupid, it also blocks the walk signal here, where there aren't even any tracks, because the two pedestrian signals are linked. Uh. They do, of course, give drivers a green light here, because drivers are super important people who have super important places to go, but pedestrians are left literally standing in the cold, waiting, for no good reason. Wow. With the independent signals in the Netherlands, this should never happen here. Yeah, I mean, like, that's clearly obvious. Like, if the green light is going that way, I mean, these folks can obviously walk. Like, that should not be the case, where that vehicle was be, was able to go. To, like, immediately, in my humble opinion, since uh, there's nothing coming from this way to go that way, they could walk immediately as long as nobody's turning right, if that makes sense. There are so many other interesting traffic light combinations in the Netherlands, such as intersections where cyclists get a green signal in all directions, or even traffic signals that prioritize bicycles when it's raining. But I think I'll save those topics for the next time I visit Groningen. I don't know of any intersections in the Netherlands that use a pedestrian scramble like you'll see in cities like London, but I have a feeling that when pedestrian volumes become that high in Dutch cities, the whole area will become pedestrianized instead, which is better for people walking anyway. Of course, alternative to traffic lights, such as roundabouts, are sometimes used, but that's a topic for another day. And there are even some intersections in Amsterdam where traffic lights have been removed completely. This is possible if car traffic is reduced enough in speed and frequency, and this will definitely be a topic for a future video. So I may hate traffic lights. Oh, no, 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 not you, not you, no, it's okay, it's okay. But the Netherlands proves that it's possible to design more efficient traffic lights that move as many people as possible, not just as many cars as possible, and they can also significantly reduce points of conflict, making the roads safer for everyone. The technology is there, use it. but the smartest cities are the ones that actually use it. I'm sorry, but I'd like to take um, this moment to that thank my right there was a wonderful video to watch. I don't know about you guys, but I totally enjoyed it, and I um, <laughs> I can't lie that that was something I never knew actually existed. I I had no idea. I I was most amazed about the um, the traffic light for the pedestrians or cyclists, I should say, um, cyclists pedestrians, where it just count down super fast, and it it, it it actually has some sensors to predict, like what. That's some first world ass stuff right there. <laughs> Either ways, man, I got to get up out of here, guys. So uh, thank you for watching as usual. And uh, like I said, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I'm out of here, guys. Peace.